Hi guys, thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you. Hi, thank you. Would you like to introduce yourselves and tell us your roles? Sure, I'm John T. Barnes, I'm Production Director at Bungie. Uh, and I'm Jesse van Dijk, and I'm the lead concept artist at Bungie. So obviously we're less than a month away from Destiny launch. Oh yeah, Congratulations Exciting. on a successful beta. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. I think a few people played it, I heard. Yeah. <laughs> A few million, yeah, yeah. 4.6 4. actually, very um, very positive actually. The, the beta um, blew our mind honestly, the, the fan reaction was absolutely fantastic and um, it was a real test, I mean we had plenty of risk in terms of the amount of technology that we had created and uh, yeah, it landed really well so very happy with how it's done. It's a good game. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, what did you guys learn uh, from the beta, other than obviously I think I was assume balancing and stuff like that? What was the biggest thing you guys saw? Actually, I think first and foremost, one of the things we were sort of most curious about was sort of how all of our infrastructure would respond, and it was certainly a test in that, in that respect that we wanted to sort of really try out all these things at scale, which we hadn't done before. And um, so in, in, in that way, it was very extremely informative for us. Um, at the same time, like, the the... the there, there really is no sort of equivalent of seeing sort of the, the, the broad public play the, 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 all of these things that we've put in place for them. And inevitably there were things to, sort of on the broader scope of things, these were details, but things that we felt like these are just tiny little knobs that we want to ch twist just a little bit before we get to the point where we, where we really hand it off and say, this is it and, and we're launching. Yeah, we, we, we play some big bets with Destiny, like we put a lot of time and effort into trying to make the cooperative experience really rich and try and slope the floor for people to cooperate and play together. So it was actually hugely uh, satisfying to see that um, you know, people would cooperate and they would get involved in public events, they would actually fire team up so that they would be able to communicate and um, you know, they would play some of the cyclical cooperative uh, experiences like the strike multiple times. Um, and actually really interesting was the amount of time that people just liked exploring, like the explore mode, you know, taking the patrol jobs. I mean, you know, spending hours just, you know, seeing how vast the, the, the worlds were was um, yeah, great to see. Great to see. Uh, and obviously you had the moon mission on that one particular mission. Yes. <laughs> which yes. I missed because I was out, so I don't get uh, the emblem. Anything you can do about that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> next door, next door. You can play it next door, okay. so yeah, go ahead. But will I get my emblem? I think we can arrange it if you... Uh, I love you guys. Yeah. It's not a problem. So you guys have announced some stuff at Gamescom, um, at the PlayStation mm -hmm. uh, press conference last night. We yeah. talked about some stuff. So do you want to tell us a little bit about what you've announced today? Well, we've um, announced a couple of things. We've talked about uh, competitive multiplayer, and I'll let Jesse talk about that. And um, we also announced the fact that you know, our game is coming out in less than four weeks and we're going to continue to support it, like it's going to change. The beta was a really good test that we could change things on the live game all the time. And so we're going to, we, you know, we built a huge game with Destiny, but honestly work really begins on 9.9 uh, .9 just as much as it did from day one. And um, we have a lot of things that are happening there. And so we'll be continuing to, to uh, update the live game, but also we've got a, a expansion one that is coming out in December. and. Uh, it's, we call it an expansion because it's not typical DLC, it's not just uh, competitive multiplayer. It's also new story, it's also new cooperative experiences. All the different activities that you can do in Destiny are getting added to by the expansion one, the deep below. Yeah, and in terms of the multiplayer, like what we offered in the beta literally was sort of the, the proverbial tip of the iceberg. Um, what, we, what we did there was really sort of test the, the core system, but the, in, in regard to what we're offering at launch, We'll have a much broader uh, variety. Um, we're talking about sort of, you know, a, a significantly higher number of maps, uh, um, a number of player modes, right? Like that uh, allow you to play competitively in, in various different ways. Um, we have a number of playlists. Basically, um, what those do is is offer certain types of experiences during certain windows of time only, um, and these are all are all sort of part of a of a, a broader effort on our end to ensure that uh, as we, at post launch, we, we we offer players something new to do in Destiny every single day, uh, and that's that's really sort of part of the, the 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 core DNA of Destiny, the the ability for us to do that and to offer that to players. You, you talked about a special map for the PlayStation Four Exodus Blue. Yes. Can you tell us anything about that? Yeah, it's, a, it's actually a great map. Um, it's uh, very uh, close quarters. It's um, very exciting. It's very intense. 
Um, it's uh, it's built around a. It's space. built around one of the the colony ships that yeah. you may have seen in uh, the Cosmodrome too. Yes. <laughs> so it's a shipyard where they built the ships actually, but it's very run down. But yeah, high intensity. Um, it's, it's a it's a great map, and uh, yeah, it's it's really good for close quarters. Let's talk a little bit about Iron Banner. Ah yes. Yeah, come on, tell us a little bit about that. So, um, generally for PvP, we try and level the playing field so that, um, you know, if, if I'm, I'm a much stronger guardian than you because I've been putting in much more time, we make it so our armors are the same, we make it so the damage per second is the same when we go into the normal PvP experience. Iron Banner is not that. Every single statistic that matters around your guardian and your weapons and everything is accurate. It doesn't have that level playing field to make it fairer. It makes it purely about how good are you and the st tools that you have. And it also um, has this wonderful aspect to it as well, which is, you know, it's a very timed opportunity and you want to be seeking out the rewards that you can to improve your, uh, your, your Guardian and uh, they're very selective, they're very, you know, a little bit more rare and, uh, yeah, I mean, aspirationally, like, my goal personally that I set myself for the, for the beta was um, I wanted to get a cloak from the Iron Banner for my, for my hunter and I actually achieved that, so it was, <laughs> it was very satisfying. But I, and literally the last... Iron Banner window, I managed to accomplish it. Good respect there. So when your, your particular, what's your favorite Guardian then? So um, I'm definitely a hunter. Um, I really like the idea of having a throwing knife and a grenade. Um, I also am not so good in close quarters, so I like to uh, uh, use a, a sniper rifle. In fact, I've got a really exotic one that's called um, Icebreaker. It has a really long range on it, it's really gnarly, so, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that's... It's, cl it's clearly not the right decision, though. The <laughs> Warlock is definitely <laughs> the better class to go with. <laughs> okay, perhaps that's... I'm a Warlock, um, but truthfully, like, I've played various... Uh, I've played all the, the classes, and I love all of them. It's just, like, sort of your, your personal graphi yeah. personal preference will, will sort of decide what, what particular class you, you will sort of... In Ultimately you can't beat a, a, anything for vanity than you can beat a cloak. I mean, come <laughs> on. <laughs> That's what you want, something cool. That's right, yeah, it's my fantasy. Uh, I can respect that too. Uh, so let's talk a bit about some more of the exotic weapons. Okay. Tell, tell us about some. So, um, exotic weapons are very aspirational, right? I mean, we, we, we give them out very um, selectively, and so if you see me and I've got an exotic weapon, we were trying to get uh, the social connections between players to come together and say, hey, John, dude, where did you get? Icebreaker. Where did, where did you get that? And I said, well, you know, if you go to Mars and you go on the strike and actually you do it on the hardest level, you know, there's a, that's where I got it for myself. But, uh, you know, and so people will start, start taking behavioral choices based on the desire to get those exotic weapons. Basically what exotic weapons represent is a package of, of things that stand out a little bit more from sort of everything else you experience. Like, we, we, we put a lot of effort into sort of telling these indirect things stories through the exotic weapons right like these are not things you're going to be concerned with as you use them right but like if you want to and you and you look for it, there will be things that you that will stand out from that make you go like hey wait a minute like how does that actually relate to x y and z that i've seen somewhere else in the game and and these are very subtle things right they were never meant to sort of take the main stage when it comes to sort of thinking about these weapons but um yeah we believe these these sort of undertones is what makes people curious about certain things and curiosity really is one of the driving mechanisms for a lot of things in Destiny. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, like some of them are actually um, pretty unique. Like, uh, you know, if you want to stack your intellect, you can get better armor. And so, like, you might take an exotic weapon choice that's going to help you there. Or if you um, look at something like the Icebreaker one I told you about, like, it's, it's very much a uh, heat d damage. And so, yeah. you know, when you get into the more complex uh, activities at, towards the, the end of, well, there is no end, in fact, playing, because we're going to get updated all the time, but towards the latter stages of the uh, initial um, leveling of your, of your Guardian, you're going to find that you're going to need to make those choices, or you need to be part of a team where you have that strength if you're going to do the raid, because they're going to be looking for you to play a role. So if you could say they would sort of highlight the five coolest things about Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, no, let's make it to 50. No. Let's do the five. Wait, let's go back and forth. Let's, let's, yeah, let's see. see what, I'm curious to see what you guys think are the, like the top five things. So uh, for me, I think top top thing is you know core action game, moment to moment gameplay. Like a Bungie game has always had that at its core, and we've really built upon that. And uh, I think that that's pretty critical for me. And um, 
you know, to expand that, if I can just, you know, go there, I think it's really important that you view that in a, like a, a socially connected world. Like the fact that we've sloped the floor for cooperation in the way that we do, um, yeah, it makes it a very exciting universe to be playing in. I, I would say definitely it is sort of the, the lovely distractions that you'll sort of encounter as you play the game. Like almost without exception, I find myself sort of engaging in a certain type of activity only to halfway through come across something you know, like whether that's a, that's a public event or like another fire team sort of, you know, crossing my path and, and then teaming up with them. Like that's, that's something that I think is, is what, what stands out to me the most like that 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 chance encounter that's such a great thing it, it provides for it, it makes sure that you sort of that you really have a unique experience every single time you sort of enter the world really okay so number three then i, I guess um, for me i think it has to be i'm going to say a raid like the raid activity is like nothing else that you have played in a shooter before like it's a six player cooperative experience everybody has to have a role um, Dan Miller, who's one of the designers on it, he says it's like uh, getting your friend to fall backwards and making sure he depends on you to catch, because it requires that level of teamwork and uh, and trust. And uh, yeah, it's it's a very long activity and uh, it's 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 very difficult and uh, but really satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, certainly another thing that stands out to me, especially sort of as an artist myself, um, uh, what I enjoy most is sort of. I would say roaming through the world and sort of taking it all in and really going on explore mode without a very specific goal in mind, right? Just to be in it and, and, and see all of these things, um, see all of the, the, the set pieces in the world that have so much sort of, so much thought went into them in a very, and, 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 and the way that th th this is not communicated explicitly to the player, but again, these are things that if you look for them, if you're curious about them, you'll find these nuggets, and, and that makes it for such a, a rewarding yeah, experience. Yeah, I'd really. expand on that. I mean, that's actually close to what I was gonna say next, which is I think we do a lot of storytelling through our artwork. Um, you know, as a fan of your art, Jesse, if I can be that within the studio, if you'll allow me, um, like, you know, and the team, it's, it's, it's just fantastic when you see some of the iconic work that they've managed to do, the composition that they've got, the skyboxes, you know. Uh, I think one of our favorite uh, multiplayer maps, for example, is uh, the only place set on Mercury. Uh, which has, you know, you're right near the sun, it's pretty amazing, and yet, you know, you have these Vex blocks that change all the time and change the sight lines. You know, when, when it comes around in, in the, you know, the random choice and you, you, you land there, it's like, oh, this is such a great map. This is Yeah, the art team that's worked on that map has done such an amazing job. Yeah, we're all fans of that. It looks amazing. Yeah, yeah. Any thoughts about releasing an art book? Oh my goodness! I think we've talked I about think it. Haven't we? we have <laughs> talked about that. I, I, yep. I don't. I don't know uh, what and when, but I, it's, I, I think it's inevitable. I mean, I think we all want it, and uh, we all have a passion for, for yep. that. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, have you got a message for the fans? You know, honestly, top message has to be thank you. Like the amount of people that I got to play with in the. the the beta and uh, the amount of participation they did and patience that they had when we were doing some cheeky tests and making their <laughs> game less fun. Um, you know, it's very difficult to, to um, understand how well it's going to be received and uh, we, we do our best, but they've just blown us away and we're really grateful for that and we want them to continue to be part of the conversation about informing what the future game is, so thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for your time today, guys. Really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank Excellent. you. Appreciate that. Thanks for watching. Why not subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the link on the screen now?